Immunology can be an overwhelming topic to study, but I'm going to show you easy ways that you can remember everything that you need to know about transplant rejections and graft versus host disease. So you can clearly understand these concepts and get every question right on exam day. So to really master this topic, you just have to know four main things. The name or type of transplant rejection, the cause or underlying mechanism behind it, the type of hypersensitivity reaction that is associated with it, and the histology that can be seen. Now let's look at the first thing you need to know, which is the name or type of transplant rejection. First, we have hyperacute transplant rejections, second, acute transplant rejections, and last, chronic transplant rejections. The great thing about the names of the types of transplant rejections is that they let you know when they can present. So I remember this by just saying, one day, one week, one year. So hyperacute, that name sounds like something that can present very suddenly. And that's correct. That's why I have one day here. Because typically it can occur within minutes to hours after receiving a transplant. So if you want, you could change it to one minute or one hour, whatever works best for you. So next, let's look at acute. So I put one week here because typically acute transplant rejections occur within like less than six months. And lastly, we have chronic transplant rejections. And this typically presents within months to years after the transplant is given. So just remember hyperacute, acute, chronic one day, one week, one year. And you are already one step closer to getting all questions about this right. Next thing that you need to know is the etiology. So all of these types of transplant rejections, they have one thing in common. So I have this little cartoon here that shows you this happy liver, this happy lung, they're happy to be transplanted to someone so that they can help improve their life. However, in transplant rejections, what happens is that the host or the person receiving the transplant, their immune system attacks this transplanted organ. So hopefully this image here will help you remember that happy lung in that previous slide is no longer so happy. And again, here we have a very sad liver. So just remember, in hyperacute, acute, and chronic transplant rejections, our body or the host body is attacking the transplanted organ. Examiners love to test this concept, and I'm pretty sure you'll see questions with options that say, the donor organ is attacking the host. That is not the case in hyperacute, acute, or chronic transplant rejections. So just remember this image right here so that you can know that the host attacks the transplanted organ. So you now know that the host immune system attacks the transplanted organ. But now you need to know what aspects of that host immune system is attacking the transplanted organ. So you can remember this by saying a tough transplant. A for a hyperacute, tough for acute, and transplant for a chronic. So what exactly does this mean? So A means antibodies, T for T cells, and again T for T cells. So in hyperacute transplant rejections, there are preformed antibodies that the host has that attacks the graft's antigens. So it's the host antibodies against the graft's antigens. And then for acute, we have T cells. That's where we have a T cell mediated response. So our T cells attack the donor antigens and for chronic we have t cells again but chronic is basically a mix of hyperacute and acute 
in that it includes both antibodies and T-cells. So it's described as a mixed cell-mediated and humoral response. So of course, to understand transplant rejections, you do have to have good knowledge about the types of hypersensitivity reactions. But just remember, a top transplant antibodies, T-cells, and then lastly, T-cells. But of course, chronic is a mix of the two, so it includes both antibodies and T-cells. So to know the types of hypersensitivity reactions, all you have to know are the numbers 2 and 4. Hyperacute is a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Acute is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. And like I said before, chronic is a mix of the two. So it has a type 2 and type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. So already you can answer most of the questions that you will see on exam day about this topic. But if you want to score even more points, then let's take a closer look at the histology for each of these types of transplant rejections. But before we do, please be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe and that notification bell if you enjoy videos like this and you want to see more. Now let's look at the histology for hyperacute. Okay, so for hyperacute transplant rejections, you'll see thrombosis and fibrinoid necrosis. So just remember, thrombosis and fibrinoid necrosis, extremely, extremely high yield. And for acute transplant rejections, you see lymphocytic infiltrates as well as neutrophilic infiltrates. So if you see infiltrates of either lymphocytes or neutrophils, then think of acute transplant rejections. And finally, for chronic transplant rejection, you will see granulation, scarring, as well as vascular wall thickening and luminal narrowing such as bronchiolitis obliterans. So I highly recommend that you just focus on this slide right here and try to remember everything that I said, all the cool mnemonics, and you will definitely be able to answer questions on exam day. But to test your knowledge, let's do a quick question. A 51-year-old undergoes a lung transplant. Two weeks later, he presents with dyspnea and cough. Biopsy reveals interstitial infiltration. What is the most likely cause? A. Graft T-cell sensitization against host antigens. B. Graft B-cell sensitization against host antigens. C. Preformed antibodies against graft ABO antigens. D. Host T cell sensitization against graft MHC antigens. So let's first determine what type of transplant rejection is this patient experiencing. So the clues in the question stem are first that he's presenting with these symptoms two weeks later. So that lets us know that it cannot be hyperacute, because like I said, hyperacute is one minute, one hour, one day. And for chronic, that can't be it either because acute occurs within months to years. So that leaves us with acute transplant rejection. So remember that in hyperacute, acute, and chronic transplant rejections, it is our body or our immune system that attacks the graft or the transplanted organ. So that means we can exclude options A and options B. And to remember the etiology or underlying cause of the types of transplant rejections, we have the mnemonic A tough transplant, A antibodies, and the two T's for T cells. So we can exclude option C because that is describing a hyperacute transplant rejection. So that means that the answer here is option D host T cell sensitization against graft MHC antigens. So before we take a look at our quick and easy mnemonic for graft versus host disease, let's review hyperacute, acute, and chronic to really solidify all of these facts for exam day. So remember that we need to know four main things to answer these questions. The name, the cause, the type of hypersensitivity reactions, and the histology. There are three types, hyperacute, acute, and chronic. 
we can know the onset of symptoms by using their names. So hyperacute, one hour, acute, one month, chronic, one year. And for the cause, we just need to remember a tough transplant, preformed antibodies, T cells, and finally T cells. But remember, chronic is a mix of the two. So we have T cells and antibodies included in chronic transplant rejections. Finally, for the hypersensitivity reaction types, all we need to remember are the numbers 2 and 4. Hyperacute transplant rejections include type 2 hypersensitivity reactions, acute is type 4, and again chronic is a mix of the two, type 2 and type 4. For hyperacute transplant rejections on histology, we will see thrombosis and fibrinoid necrosis. For acute transplant rejections, we will see infiltrates, so neutrophilic infiltrates, lymphocytic infiltrates, so just think about that for acute. Finally, for chronic, we will see granulation, scarring, vascular wall thickening, and luminal narrowing, for example, bronchiolitis, obliterans. Now let's look at graft versus host disease. Okay, so for graft versus host disease, the big difference here is that the graft is attacking the host. So we can remember this by this cartoon again, which shows you this very angry liver and this very scared host. So the graft is attacking the host. Another major difference between graft versus host disease and the other transplant rejections is that graft versus host disease can occur at any time. There is no specific time for this. So if it can occur at any time, how can we differentiate between them? Okay, so typically people say GVHD for short for graft versus host disease. As you can see here, that has four letters. Those four letters can let us know that graft versus host disease is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. That is very high yield to know. One of the most important ways of getting questions about this right is to know what type of symptoms we can see. And we can use the letters in graft versus host disease to know this. So the R in graft stands for rash. So these patients can have a rash. The V stands for very yellow, which should let you know that we're talking about jaundice. So very yellow, jaundice. The H stands for hepatosplenomegaly, and this can be seen in those patients. And finally, D stands for diarrhea. So these are the symptoms that can commonly be seen in patients with graft versus host disease. But like I said, the graft is attacking the host. So it can attack basically everything in the host. So you can see many different types of symptoms. So if you see a patient comes in that had a transplant and they have jaundice, they have diarrhea, they have a rash or even abdominal pain, you want to consider graft versus host disease. So if you enjoyed these mnemonics, then please be sure to power up the like button, hit subscribe, and that notification bell so that you never ever miss another video like this. Thank you so much for watching and to continue learning more, click this video right here.